This video is on quick check. Quick check is a way of quickly checking uh, properties within Haskell, specifically properties that our functions should have. Of course, when we write a function, uh, we want to know if that function, well, <laughs> has certain properties like, hey, does it actually work? Uh, is it correct? For example, if we find a alternative implementation of the reverse function, does it actually produce a reversal of a list? And all of that stuff, um, that's what quick check can test. And it works like this, where you define a property uh, with some variables, and then you just run quick check on that property. And then it tells you if anything failed or if the test has passed. Okay. So if you want to get quick check, you should do that with Cabal and then you can import quick check like this. If you want to use it in the interpreter, you also have to do this import. Okay, so let's look at the basics. We define any property just as a function. So prop is not a special keyword here. This is just the name of our function. We could call it whatever we want. And what we check here is that A plus B equals B plus A. And if we quick check that, well, yes, it passed. Great. So maybe we want to check something more, well, um, more extensive, like uh, the length of tail XS should be the length of XS minus one, right? Because tail should discard one element. Okay, so let's test that and we see that, whoops, this has failed. And this has failed because, of course, tail cannot uh, get the empty list as an argument. But quick check still wants to use it as testing data. So the tail XS here is a problem. So what do we do now? Do we write a new tail that works with the empty list? Well, no, not really. What we have to do is we have to tell QuickCheck to restrict the testing data to some other property. So what we're saying here is that, well, for an XS that should be tested, the following property should hold, not null XS. Because if that holds, then XS is not the empty list, and then we can use it within tail. So this solves our problem. Uh, this little operator here is defined within quick check, so this is not special syntax. This is actually just a, a quick check operator. Um, right, and you can use, well, any uh, properties you want. Uh, you could actually also use multiple ones. Okay. And as we can see here, now the tests uh, pass because, of course, this property should be true. But, and that's the important thing, 10 of those um, XS were discarded because QuickCheck uh, tried to test the empty list 10 times. Okay, if your property is way too specific, something like X equals a certain value, like X equals 1 or X equals 5 or something like that, then the testing will be, well, uh, it won't work at all because quick check will just tell you that it ran out of test cases and it has no idea what to check um, and it will give you some statistics on that. Okay, so if you want to get a bit more of a verbose output, you can use this verbose function where you put the property uh, in this verbose function and put that into quick check and then you get more verbose output on what test cases have passed, um, what have failed and also which ones have been skipped. So here we can see it skipped the empty list because the precondition was false. Okay, so... As we can see here, we test for equality with the simple um, equals within uh, Haskell. And what we're actually checking here is if the function application with the equals equals um, in the end results in a true. But that's not really what we're checking, right? Because we don't actually want to check if this function returns true. What we want to check is if the data that we get out of this is equal. And we can do that in quick check with a triple equal sign. The great advantage that we get from this is that now uh, in the verbose output, we actually get the um, evaluation of which terms uh, actually were equal. So that's where we could also do some more debugging if we have um, data types that have weird behaviors when checking on equality. Okay.
for the next slides, we look at this um, definition of a reverse function, uh, which uses an accumulator. And what we want to check is if the output of reverse xs equals the output of ref xs, because now we want to check if our reverse does the same as the standard reverse function. Okay, maybe we want to get some more information on what data has actually been tested on this data uh, or on those, those properties. So you can do that with collect. As you can see here, this was our property before and you just put uh, this collect and then something you want to collect, something, some information you want to get out of the uh, testing data and then you put the dollar sign there. And then after doing the quick check, uh, you can see that you get some statistics on the properties we wanted to collect. So what we wanted to collect was the length of XS. And as we could see here, uh, for example, one, uh, the length one was tested a lot of times and the length zero also. Uh, the length 26 for some reason uh, was also tested uh, quite a few times. And this gives you some statistic on what has been tested. And of course, now we sort of see that, well, maybe we don't want to check on a list that is empty because that would be trivial uh, to show that, well, those two reverse functions do the same. Um, maybe we want to restrict that a bit uh, more with a precondition. And since that is so important, uh, since those, those single um, attributes are so important sometimes, there is this classify function. This classify function now collects how many of the test cases were empty, as we called them, um, simply by checking if the length of XS equals zero. So for all the testing data where length of XS is zero, uh, though this testing data is labeled as empty. And then when you do the quick check on this property, you can actually see a percentage of how many of those were empty. You can, by the way, use multiple collects and multiple classifiers uh, within your property in order to get even more information on the testing data. And of course, 100 tests is not always uh, a good testing size. 100 is actually quite small, which is why you can bump that up with max uh, success or the function with max success and then uh, the maximum number of um, testing, uh, testing cases that should be generated. Okay. But something we haven't looked at right now is something which is actually hugely important for the tests. We haven't looked at types. Because the question is, when we um, tell QuickCheck to just generate some testing data, well, what is the type of that testing data? And sadly, often it is actually not really useful for our testing purposes. So let's look at the lookup function. The lookup function takes a list of uh, tuples that have keys and values in them and lookup basically um, spits out a just of a value if a tuple exists where um, the key we want to look up, the k, is the first element of that tuple and v, the value, is the second element of that tuple. So that's what, what we want to check here. If we put that binding into a pre-existing map, does that actually work? Does this lookup in the end uh, generate uh, what we want? Now, if we look at the testing data, we see something that we might not want to see it checks everything with the empty tuple. Because lookup basically tells you that the key has to be able uh, to be checked for equality. But we have a big problem here. When doing the tests with empty tuples, this will trivially always be true because empty tuple only has one value, which is the empty tuple. So this is not good testing data. Uh, this will always be true and this doesn't actually check what we want to check with this property. Which is why we can specifically tell QuickCheck what the types should be. But here actually we're cheating a bit because we're creating this new variable um, called types, which we never use. But we put the uh, k and v in this case into a context because we say for this statement, k and v have to be ints. 
So now we're telling the whole type inference within Haskell that k and v have to be ints. And quick check will also take note of that. So we can see now uh, if we look at an excerpt of the, the verbose output that actual maps were done with ints in this case. And this is more like the testing data we want. So you should investigate what quick check uh, is actually doing because sometimes the test data generated is just useless for the actual property you want to test. Right. There is also a way of generating your own test data, which I will not show in this video, but I will link to the documentation of quick check uh, in the description of this video. There are much more uh, or many more functions that you can use with quick check in order to either restrict uh, what is being tested or to get even more information on uh, the properties you are testing. And Property testing is, of course, a very nice thing because it gives us some insight into how our functions work. But, of course, they don't prove the correctness. Even a million test cases don't prove that your function is correct. It shows that in those million test cases, there have been uh, no problems and the property that you wanted to test actually holds. But, again, it just doesn't show that uh, it's correct. Quick check is not a verifier. Quick check is just well, what the name implies. It's a quick check of properties.